Hi folks, I'm Sean Crabtree. And I'm Cameron Bailey. We don't want to change the way you do business. We want to change the way you're thinking about your business. We want you to have better results, happier clients, and make more money. Let's get it started. And welcome into Dental Profits. A brand new year. Happy New Year from all of us. It's an exciting time. Now is the opportunity for you to get 2018 in order so that it can be the very best year that it possibly can be. And I am so excited that you're with us today because that's exactly what we are going to talk about today. And we want to give you the number one thing. Somebody asked me today, actually it was, a, it was an interview. Yeah. Uh, I just did an interview with, uh, with Howard Fran. And Howard said, Sean, what is the number one thing? And this is what Cameron and I want to talk to you about today. The number one thing. If you had to pick all these years, dude, that, the number one the number thing one, that people above call you everything, about. Everything. Everything. Above everything. The number one thing, and we would like this to be your focus in 2018. It's a new year. You might as well change your mindset right off the rip. The rip. Right off the start. Right off the rip. The number one thing is it's not about selling dentistry. Stop selling dentistry. Start selling value. Value. It's all about value. Stop selling dentistry. Start selling value. We want to talk to you about that. I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, that sounds like a bunch of psycho bobbly boot. We want to talk about that at great length. And my goal in this podcast is, is to convince you that it's not about price, it's not about dentistry, it's not about insurance. insurance, it's not about any of those things, it's about value and we want to give you three very powerful takeaways that you can implement immediately if you'll make this a focus for 2018 that will have you see dramatic results in this coming year. If you don't do anything else, make sure that it's all about value and do these three things. So let's talk about it. Well, the first stop step selling is dentistry. Stop selling dentistry, man. Start selling value. Take your focus off the dentistry. Take what is that? Focus. What does that mean? I mean, it means stop selling. Nobody buys. Listen, guys. Nobody buys cars, clothes, shoes, teeth. Nobody buys that because of the commodity itself. We buy everything because we see value, and really, more specifically, what emotional value. Right, we buy everything because we see value. It's all about the value. It's all about the value. So the question is, question number one, is there anything, if you guys think about it, is there anything that you personally have ever bought based strictly on price? And I've asked that question a thousand times, if not more, over the years. And, 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 and it's a trick question because if you think about it, you know, uh, you're, you're probably your first reaction is, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff <laughs> that I've bought on price. I buy everything on price all the time. I was, I, I, I'll give you a good example. I was just in, we're in the south, okay? So we have... They couldn't tell that from my yeah, accent. Well, you guys are listening. We're in Tennessee. We're in the south. So we have Kroger in Tennessee. You know, we go to Chicago. We go to Michigan. What do they have in Michigan? What is it called? It's the... Uh, yeah, I can't think of it. It starts. Well, yeah, everybody has a supermarket somewhere near them. When you go in the supermarket, what I was, it was Christmas. We had some people coming over to the house. I don't go grocery shopping. This is like the one time a year I will even go to the grocery store. I'm very lucky. <laughs> so I had to, I had to get this stuff to make the Rotel dip, right? You guys know what Rotel dip, nacho cheese dip things to dip the crackers in. Whatever. Nacho cheese. Yeah, nacho cheese. So when you go there and you're standing there, you can buy. You can buy the Velveeta cheese right, for $2 more, or I can buy the store brand cheese for right. $2 less. Right. Which one did you buy? I bought the cheap one. Did you buy it be based on price? I bought it, well, I bought it totally based on price because I did not see a difference in the value of the two products. Now, see, I'm confused. Is it about the value? It's all about the value. It's about the value. But so I it's not about the price. It's not about the price. So what you're saying is you did not buy it on price. What you're saying is 
You bought it on value, and because you didn't see any difference in value, right. you chose the least expensive. Yeah, exactly. So it's about the and value. And I got in trouble when I got home because I got the wrong thing. My wife wants to know why I didn't get Velveeta cheese. <laughs> well, this was $2 cheaper. Yeah, but she knows the Velveeta. Difference. I thought it was nacho. That's whatever, nacho cheese. Whatever it is, it's Velveeta. It's, okay. it's Velveeta. But what I'm saying is, the, th <laughs> the thing is, uh, I didn't see the difference in value. So, so, I just, so I made the decision on price. When I got home... She knew the difference in value. My wife saw the total right. difference in value, and I got in trouble because I got the wrong thing. So ask yourself, as you're listening to this, I mean, for you to be convinced what it is that we already know, it's all about value. For you to stop selling dentistry, start selling value, you have to truly answer this question for yourself. Has there ever been a time in your life, or anybody that you know, or anybody you ever will know, that has ever bought anything based had, strictly on price? And I would remember, submit, if you think about it... Do you remember that time? Listen. That, let me finish. <laughs> if you think about it, you're going to be in Cameron's boat more than... Anything. If you can think of something that you bought based on price, I bet if you dive down into it, you would, you would answer... You really didn't buy it based on price. You bought it based on the fact that you didn't see any difference in value. Now I got to tell a short story. Well, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to elaborate on that. Okay. Just for a quick second. With the Velveeta cheese, <laughs> back to the cheese. If if you got to put yourself in a position of thinking like a patient too. That's another part of that. I didn't understand the difference. In the Velveeta in the, cheese and the store brand cheese, right, right? Right. But my wife did. Right. The average patient doesn't understand the difference, the difference in your dentistry versus someone else's dentistry versus dentistry as a whole, right? I would I would submit that's true. That, would you? And that's happened. Of course that's true. That's of course that's true. The average person doesn't know good dentistry from bad dentistry, mediocre dentistry. They don't understand the difference in value, and that's why it's up to us to stop selling the dentistry and start selling the value. Yep. Now, the first time I heard this concept directly, and I've probably told this story a, a million times. I don't know if I've ever told it on camera, but true story. I was a, uh, probably a junior in college, and, and my professor walked. I will never forget this. My professor walked in. He was the head of the department, business department. Well, you walked in 1963 or 64. I think every time I tell the story, you say something <laughs> like that. Um, but but so he walked in as this is a huge auditorium. And he hands the syllabus out and he says, "Nobody that you ever have known or ever will know, including yourself, has ever or will ever buy anything based strictly on price. Instead." We all buy based on value. And when I heard that, I thought that's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. I'm broke, you know, I'm 20 years old. I mean, everything I do is on price. You know, I can make 50 bucks, man, last a solid week, and I can eat food on it for a week, <laughs> and I can still have beer money left yeah. over, right, on yeah. 50 bucks. Every decision I make is, yeah. on, is on price. But what I learned is it's really not on price, it's on value. And so I valued beer <laughs> more, than, more than quality food. <laughs> and so I bought 25 cent ramen noodles and tuna fish yeah. so I could have more beer. Yeah. Because it's about value. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the value. And everything in your life, when you think about everything you purchase, there's a reason behind it. And it's, it's value. It's an emotional reason. Right? That's true. There's another piece to this, though. I mean, it, 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 so for, for me to understand this, if I'm listening to this, and, and, and I know what you're, th I mean, I'm hoping that as we're explaining this, it's coming across not as philosophical, but, but very concrete. Stop selling dentistry, start selling value. It's all about the value. In order for that to be true, I've got to be clear. You've got to be clear. It's not about price. It's about the value. And, like in your story, if there is no value, what else are you going to make the decision on? That's all you it's have. It's all about price. the price. Yeah. So... You've got to get clear in your own mind that when a patient says price or asks what it costs, what does my insurance cover, whatever, that's Ooh, not value. That's not the patient's not saying I can't afford it, or they're not saying it's all about the price. Or not, what they're saying is 
You've not created value. You have not shown I me don't enough. see value. What they're saying is you've not shown me enough value to Therefore, have me overcome the price. So I want the store bought, the store brand. I'll just take the store bought cheese. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. Now, the other part of that is, though, we justify based on. The human nature is everything is about value. It's all about the value. But I justify based on logical things. Yeah. So I justify based on price. So, quick example. Um, you and I have a client whose husband just bought a, 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 like a two-year-old Jag. That would be Jaguar. Jaguar. Right. Couple-year-old Jaguar, and so he pulls up one day, and we're like, man, what a nice. But you know, don't tell nice him this. Jag. Don't tell him this, but Jaguar's like the most, well, one of the most appreciating vehicles you can buy. But he saw value. Okay. He saw value. So he pulls up in this Jag. Hey, how do you like my new car? I said, man, that's great. And he goes, yeah, I got a good deal. <laughs> and I said, no, wait a minute. Did you really get a good deal on a Jaguar? Because you could have bought three bottom-end Hyundais. I could have bought four or Kias <laughs> for what you pay for that Jaguar. For that Jaguar, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't a, really about a good deal. No. It's about I place a lot of value on this particular brand of vehicle, and then I justified it because in my mind the price I paid overcame the value overcame. My value was more than that. And I would submit that anybody who's listening, ask yourself, is there anything that you can ever think that you ever bought based strictly on price and then dive into that? Is it really true that you brought it on price, or is it that you bought what you valued and then justified it on price. Now here's the second thing I would throw out at you. If you see, if you if you answer, if you're able to answer that solidly, you're on your way to stop selling dentistry for 2018 and start selling value. Second thing is, because some of you guys are listening to this and you're going, <laughs> you don't understand, Sean. In my state, city, town, Suburb. practice, <laughs> yeah. People don't have any money. I mean, how many years have we been hearing that? You know, this is a, this is a, this is, you yeah, know. I was, I was in. Uh, this is yeah, Warren, Michigan. This yeah. is Peoria, Arizona. This is Phil. You guys, on. you guys in, uh, you guys in downtown Chicago on Michigan Avenue. I was on uh, Michigan, is it Michigan Avenue? Michigan yeah. Avenue in downtown so Chicago. So we were in practice. This practice was beautiful. It's right on Michigan Avenue. On third downtown floor. Downtown Chi Chicago. It's third or fifth floor, I can't yeah. remember, but the operatory windows were floor to ceiling operatory mm. windows and they looked over Lake Michigan. I mean, it was a beautiful practice. Beautiful. And the doctor is trying to explain to me that my patients don't, don't have, have any, any money. money. It's all about price. It's all they about price. They don't have any money. So not only did I look up the median income for the area, which was ridiculous, but also if you go downstairs, this is a fifth floor. I mean, she's a high, in a high rise building. This is the fifth floor. If you go down to the lobby, there's all kinds of stores to buy product. There was $20,000 diamond rings, $5,000 purses, $10,000 um, suits, you know, yeah. all these th high-end stores in the bottom of this complex. And there's no way that they're going to be there. If there's no money if there's there. there's no money there, right. <laughs> I mean, there's, so, you know, that, that makes right. no sense. So controlling your mindset of what you think is half of the battle. But the first question is, is there anything you have ever bought on price? We've kind of killed that, right? But, but now you've got to go to the next piece, which is what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, because some of you guys are listening to this, and you're going, yeah, but you don't understand. This is what I hear all the time from my patients. Exactly. I can't afford that. I can't afford that. I can't afford that. Well, let me ask you a question. If you, if you understand the first part of what we said, and you understand that it's truly not about price, it's about value, then put yourself in the patient's shoes. Do you think the patient's going to tell you, you know, Doc, i got to be honest with you. I'm sure that the price you're talking about here is very fair, but the <laughs> truth of the matter is I just don't see any value in that. What I do see value in is the Disney trip and the $75,000, you know, F-150 or the, what's the King's Ranch we were in the other day? What does that thing cost? The, uh, was, was that a 350 the, or 250? A, a 350, no, brand new, brand new F350, F350 no Kings telling. Ranch edition. I think them things are approaching 100 grand. They're not going to tell you I want to go buy and I see more value in the F350. What they're going to tell you is I can't afford it. 
And you've got to be strong enough to understand that they're not going to, they're not even thinking that deeply themselves. Patients are not going to go, you know, I really do like it, but I don't see value. They're not no. thinking that, right? They're going to go, you need to come down on the price, or you're charging too much, or I can't afford that, or whatever they're going to say. And so when you're hit over the head with that stick for lots and lots of years, it's easy. I understand. It is so easy to fall in this trap to begin to think that when they say that, it's really true, but what you have to do is remain strong and point the finger back at yourself. Number one, it's not true. Okay, it's not true. Go read some stuff. Jeffrey Gittimer, whatever. I mean, there's millions of opportunities. Go, you know, call us for references, whatever you need, but understand, it's not about price. Even it's about value. So when they tell you that, realize that's a clue. It's that all you've about not value. created the value. So don't look at it and go, oh, geez, don't have any money. Look at it for what it is. I've not created value. I've not created value. Now, Sean, how do you create value? Well, I, you know what? Let's talk about three things. Three things to create value. Let's talk about three things that we would suggest if you can get past the first two things that we talked about. I mean, when Howard about. was asking you this question, he was asking you what is, he asked you, what is the most, in, the, what, the biggest challenge that you see when people call the Crabtree Group for help? And that is the number one challenge, and that's why we're talking about this for you. So let's you're listening to this you know, for 2018. There's three things, three simple things. Three things if, if you can get past this number one. Number one, you've come to the realization that nothing you ever buy or your clients or your patients have ever bought has anything to do with price. It has everything to do with value. You gotta believe it. If you believe that, now you're on your way. There's three things that we would challenge you to do. If you're a dentist and you're listening to this, or if you're a hygienist or an assistant, you're listening to this, here's what we challenge you to do for 2018. Three simple things. Number one, redefine what a full exam is. Now, I mean, what do you mean by that? You got to redefine what it is that you're actually examining. Everybody knows we're going to examine what's going on in the mouth. Clinically. Clinically, right. But we also have to examine everything else that's attached to that mouth, which is a brain, a heart, emotions. I think they used to teach in dental school that a diagnosis without a full exam malpractice. Is, is malpractice. So let's redefine what a full exam is. A full exam for 2018 and here on out, our challenge to you, number one tip, stop selling dentistry, start selling value. Number one tip, redefine a full exam. A full exam from this day forward has got to be a complete examination, not only of what's going on clinically, but what's going on emotionally? What's most important to the patient? Finding out what it is that they value about their smile and their teeth. Right? That I, no, let's, let's be clear. This is not is what is your chief complaint. <laughs> right? This is not your what is your chief what complaint. What is your chief complaint? What do you not throw like? Throw that yeah. out to win. What, what do you not like Rip about your smile? Rip it up and throw it away. What do you not like about your smile? Break that habit. We should add another tip. I mean, do, Whatever, uh, however you normally open it up from here, it, what is your chief complaint? What brought you in to see us today? Throw, throw all, all that out. stuff throw it all out, out the window. Throw it all out. Start fresh 2018. Take all the verbiage that you've used. If you're a hygienist and you've been a hygienist for a long time, take all the verbiage you've used in the past, throw it out, reanalyze. Is what I'm saying really getting to an emotional value or am I just kind of talking topically? Right. If you ask, for example, what you're saying is, if you ask a patient what's your chief complaint, they're going to give you a dental answer. Yeah. Two We're not things. selling dentistry. No. We're selling value. Nobody wants cars, clothes, shoes, or teeth. Those are. They want value. We've got to sell the value. So, step one: redefine what the full exam is. You've got to find out what's emotionally most important to this patient, and then we can show them how our offerings clinically can give them that. Right. So, step one is tip number one. You have to get clear in your head that an exam is not a full exam unless you examine what the patient wants emotionally and what's happening clinically. What's step right? two? Yeah, what's step two? Step two, we would tell you this. From this point forward, ask, 
what is, ask the patient, what's most important to you about your teeth? And that would be the for the, before the exam. If you do a full, ex, if you do a one, a, a one five zero new patient exam on the doctor's side of the house, that means the assistant needs to be asking and finding out what's the most important thing to you, Mr. Patient, about your teeth or your smile overall, and you're looking for an emotional kind of answer. I want to ask you, before you even glove up, before you even, before you're even, before you bring the doctor in. Yeah. If you're on the hygiene side of the house, that means if, if the 150 is on the hygiene side of the house, then that means the hygienist is finding out this information. So number one, redefine. It's all about the value. All about the value, man. Redefine what a full exam is, and number two, Doctor, do not go in the room for a comprehensive exam or even a recare exam, even a, even a, even a hygiene exam. Don't go in to the operatory to see the patient unless or until there's been um, a full examination before you walk in of what's most important to the patient. And that's the question: at, What's the most important thing to you about so, your teeth? Well, and you're looking well, for an emotional answer. I think we got to stop there for just a second. What's, okay. Uh, tell everybody listening and watching. You tell them. Well, I, want, I, want, I want you to tell them. Tell That's not your cheese. <laughs> tell everybody listening and watching what's so important about that verbiage because they're going to miss it. Because you said verbiage very, very specific when you asked that. What's the most important thing to you about your teeth? What's most important to you about your teeth? I didn't ask what would you change about your teeth. I, w I didn't ask how do you feel about your teeth. I didn't ask what do you not like about your teeth. Right. Listen to how he said that. What is the most important thing to you about your teeth? And I'm looking for an overall kind of answer. I want to ask that specifically because I'm not looking for a dental. That's what's called an open-ended question. It starts with what, what or how. Or how. And with that particular question, if you ask it that way every single time, you're going to get a global answer. What's most important to you, Sean, about your teeth? Right. Right. You're well, I want. You know, I want them healthier. I want them straight and white. You have to elaborate, but it's going to open the conversation up to where you can find out what's emotionally most important. And you're looking for the patient to tell you emotional answers, right? I want to be more confident. I don't want to be embarrassed. Those kinds of things. I don't want to feel self-conscious. This, this is not dentistry, you guys. This is across the board. I mean, if you think about it, you've probably been asked this question yourself. I know I was over the holidays at Best Buy. Dude, what's most important to you about an HD camera? I mean, my friend, one of my best friends is a real estate agent, huge real estate agent. What's most important to you about your house? Right. You know, he's like, dude, I don't sell houses because of, uh, you know, it's the biggest decision that most Americans will make ever, biggest financial decision. Right. And they make it so quickly. Like, right. he's like, he's like, I have to slow people down because they go in the house and they see granite countertops. So if you're not see, careful, you don't create value you if you go too value. quick. Right. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, so you I mean, it's, it's every industry, Is guys. Is that Thomas? He's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. It's every industry. Every industry. You should tell him we talked about it. I will. I'll hey, tell Thomas, you. we're talking about you. Talking about you, dog. Listen, every industry has to go through the point where they learn to create value. Yeah. And in dentistry, we've got to step up. What's most important to you about your teeth? Before I get in the exam, before I dive in clinically. What's Doctor, step three? you've got to be clear about that too. I mean, for 2018, number one, redefine in your own mind and as a team what a full exam looks like. Number two, do not go into the room until there's been a clear examination of what's most important to the patient. Number three, number three, it's all about what? Value, man. It's all about the value. Stop selling dentistry. Start selling value. You focus on the value. What's number three? You've redefined what a full exam is. Number two, you've, you've found out what's most important to the patient now because of your redefinition of a full exam before you walk in. Number three, doctor, you have to base the diagnosis not simply on what's going on clinically in the mouth when you're explaining it to the patient. Have the patient understand base the diagnosis in what's most important to them value. That explain the diagnosis in terms of what's most important to them. Have them understand that what they told you is most important can only be achieved by getting the diagnosis that they need clinically. That's the three things that are going to get you rolling in 2018. I'll give you guys some verbiage. We gave you some verbiage for step two. What's most important to you about your teeth? Verbiage for step three. You guys that are listening need to write this down or watching write this down. 
what that means to you is. Okay? What you told me was most important is that you wanted self uh, have a self-confidence about your smile or you didn't want to be embarrassed about your smile anymore. Y'all, and this is not dentistry. This is sales 101. I mean, I, you know, when I was training reps in my former life in telecommunications, we used to talk about features versus benefits. Right, right. Using that verbiage, what's most important or what that means to you is the, the, the dentistry, the diagnosis that you have, there are features to that. And you guys know those features. But those are not important to the patient. What's important to the patient is what it means to them emotionally, right, right. right? And that's how you base the diagnosis in what's most important to the patient emotionally, i.e. value. Because it's not about selling dentistry. It's about selling value. Because it's all about value. So all your crowns, your fillings, all those things. Here's what you, here's what you need, Mr. Patient. You need X, Y, Z. All of these clinical things. And what, and that, what that means, means to you, you is... is you're not going to have to worry about being embarrassed again. You're going to have that confident smile that you've always been looking for for the last three years. You're going to be able to go out with your family and smile in pictures and smile at Christmas in front of the Christmas tree. All of those things that people buy emotion-wise, that's what you're presenting. But to be able to do that, on step number three, you've got to get clear in your mind. Step number one, a full examination has got to be an examination of what's most important to the patient in yes. addition to what's going on clinically. Number two, I've got to make sure if I'm the doctor or the hygienist or the assistant, I've got to make sure that that information is gotten to before I bring the doctor in because he's got to be able to base the diagnosis on that. Those are the top three tips. And I'm promising you, listen, you know, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I'm telling you, if you will do this on a consistent basis, there is no reason in the world. I was on Dental Town the other day, and, and somebody was really, uh, you know, giving me all kinds of grief because I was telling them that our guys will shoot for a 98% acceptance rate. And he's like, oh, that's ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. People do it every single day. You know what? Just because you're not doing it. <laughs> exactly. But you know what? If you're listening to this and you're thinking, man, I got a 25% acceptance or rate. Or 33% acceptance Or maybe I'm not even tracking it. Yeah. You know what? If you will focus on these three things, you can have a 98% acceptance rate. If you'll do it consistently, if you will realize the importance of it, if you will make it a focus for 2018, just these three things. Let me ask you a question. What would it mean to your bottom line if you had a 98%, that means 9.8 times out of 10, you're swinging anybody that, bat. that comes you're in. You're swinging that bat and you're hitting that ball. 9.8 times out of 10. That means if you get 10 new patients a month and you're comprehensively diagnosing. It changes the game, man. That means almost 10 times out of 10, you're getting it. Yeah. I mean, that is how you make it in 2018. And this show is all about. Happier clients, better results, and making more money. You can do this. And just because you haven't done it in the past doesn't mean you can't do it in the future. You can do this, implement those three things. 2018 will be the best that it can possibly be for you. Guys, thanks for tuning in to Dental Profits. Find us on YouTube. We're on LinkedIn, Sean Crabtree, Cameron Bailey. If you, if you like what you hear, if you have any more questions about these three things, if you want to know how to create value, reach out to us. Call us. Call us. TheCrabtreeGroup.com. Go online. You can send us an email, and we'd love to hear from you. We're happy to help because it's about you, and it's about happier clients, better results, and making more money. What are we going to talk about next week? Next week, we're going to talk about milk your own cow. <laughs> We're going to teach you how to milk your own cows. You don't have to go get cows out of somebody else's barn. We're going to teach you guys how to milk your own cows. Milk the cows you got in your barn. And guess what? I'll give you a hint. Creating value is a big piece of that. Big piece of that. Guys, let's make 2018 great. We'll see you next week.